Good afternoon to everyone who is tuning in to D Gentleman's Look. Uh, my name is Devon Darby, and today we're going to be talking about finances. I believe that finances is definitely a uh, topic of discussion for men. It's really, really important for everyone, but as far as a man, there's so much responsibility and obligations uh, that tie along with being uh, financially responsible. Uh, so today I thought to make a video that will pretty much discuss um, all of the ins and outs about finances and to get people thinking and having uh, better relationships with money so that you would be the gentleman that you were designed to be. Uh, before we get into the video, I just want to invite everyone to subscribe to the channel uh, to hit the notification tab so that you can always be informed of the videos that I post so I don't have to always uh, keep sending out you know, different um, emails and links to direct you guys. <laughs> Even though I don't mind, but I just want you guys to get the content so that every time there's a video posted, uh, you'll just be notified and you can always head over to the gentleman's look and see what I have going on at the channel. All right. So uh, again, let's get into the topic of finances. Um, finances, especially in New York City, it's, it's really, 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 really hard to uh, save money in, in uh, New York City. Um, but what I do suggest a lot of young men out there who are maybe living at home with their parents and um, they, they might not have the job or the dream job that they want, but they have a steady job, uh, even if it's part-time. Uh, what you can do is try to open up a savings account, not just with a local bank near you, but try to open up a savings account with a bank that's kind of far away from your neighborhood. You know, um, with your job, set up a automatic um, deduction to come out of your, your check or with your financial institution that you may, you may already bank with, say you bank with a Chase in your neighborhood. You can go to Chase and set up a way for that funds to be deducted from your account and sent to that other bank, that other savings bank that you uh, banked with for your savings. That's so hard to get to because you won't really notice not having the money if it's already being deposited out of your excuse me, withdrawn out of your account into your savings account. So you'll get used to this living off of what's in your your bank account that's close to your, your neighborhood. You'll get used to living off of that. So rather be $20, $30, $40, $50, $100, $100, whatever you can afford, you just want to try to have your savings account with an institution that is kind of far away from your neighborhood and have it directly sent over there out of your, out of your bank so that you won't see it. Um, I know a lot of people rely on just putting money, if you're old school, probably putting money in your, in your house in a, in a, uh, in a, in a shoe box or, um, you know, getting a safe and putting it in your house or something like that. Um, and the same thing goes for saving with a bank that's close to you. The, the thing is, when the money is close to you, you're always constantly seeing it and you're always tempted to touch it. Especially if you see it stacking, you're going to be tempted to touch it. So you want to try to have it automatically done and with out of your reach so that you know you can just not even really think about it. So I think that would be the best situation for someone who's who's a young man and, and just starting to um, make some money and don't want to worry about just being solely financially uh, obligated to managing that money physically. You can just do it automatic. Um, it's something that I knew about. But I, I, I didn't really take heed to it and be disciplined enough to do that. And I started, you know, getting more on that type of uh, level as I got older. But that's my advice uh, for people who are trying to save. Uh, finances is, is a big deal because if you, a lot of decisions that you make when you're young financially can really affect um, the things that you want to do as you get older. Yes, you can always turn things around, but it's much harder. Um, the reason why I say that is when you when you get older, a lot of different things happen. Uh, for one, you probably move out of your parents' house, and then you acquire your own bills, acquire your own bills, paying rent, mortgage, utilities, what have you. Uh, when you get older, you might just want a car. You know, even though you're living at home with your parents, if you if you get yourself a decent car, now you have a car note, you have a car insurance, you got to put gas in that car. You know, it's, it's still, um, that type of uh, liability is nothing like having a house and having a car and all these things. But 
it's still money that you could have been using for saving before those things came. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, when you're a young man, chances are you're not making that much a lot of times. You're making some money, but not that much. So even a car note and a car insurance can be quite a bit for you. So it just kind of disrupts your saving pattern. So it's like before you do all of these things, you just kind of want to set those uh, disciplines in and get used to saving so that when you do acquire assets, um, well, having a car is not really an asset, but when you do acquire certain other financial obligations, at least you'll have those saving principles in play. It's kind of harder to develop it later on. You know, um, so yeah, I, I just think that um, it's really important to have a good relationship with money um, because money can really overtake you. You know, money is not everything, but it does allow you you know, some forms of freedom and um, comfortability in life. So you kind of want to take your financial future really, really serious. Uh, when you get getting out of college, if, if, you, if you go to college, you know, a lot of uh, banking institutions will definitely target you guys because they know you broke. <laughs> they know you broke, so they know that you probably just working a part-time job or you might not even be working at all, and they know you want a lot of things, especially when you, you know, you're that age and you're just craving for everything, everything materialistic. So they send you all of these credit cards and all of these things, um, hoping that you would just run it up based off a of desire. Um, now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and be like, don't take any credit cards or don't do this or don't do that. Because it's all a learning experience. And when you're in your 20s, you know, um, a lot of things are starting to become new to you. You're just getting out of high school, you know, three years ago or so. And when you were in high school, things were more structured. You know, you had a set schedule. You know, you know what you were doing every day. But when you hit 21 or 20 or 19, you know, you kind of start to step out into the world and start to see things from your own perspective. You know what I mean? Not what just set for you. And you start wanting a lot. You start wanting everything you see. You know, um, so you, this is the time where most people get in a lot of, a lot of debt because they're just reaching for everything. There's just so much to have now that you feel free, you know, free from school and, you know, things like that. So you just start wanting more. Um, and that's why I say it's, it's okay to get all of the things that you want, you know, but you just have to have some type of structure to it. You can't work, it, I don't care where you work, it could be fast food, retail, you can't get every check and just start spending everything from that check based off of what you want just because you have the money. You know, if something costs $500 and your check is $500, that doesn't mean that you can afford it. Some people would say, but I have the money to get it. It's not like, it's not a problem, I have the money. But if what you're going to get is going to leave you flat broke, then that means you really couldn't, you really couldn't afford that. You know what I mean? You just had the money to get it, but you can't afford it. You know, when you want to afford something, or what it means to be able to afford something, it means that you can obtain that thing and, and still be good after. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can still save, you can still meet your financial obligations and things like that, even after you, after you have purchased that item. So don't think because you have the money in the bank for something that you can afford it. That means that what you are worth is just the same amount as what you're trying to get. So you're not really getting anything out of that purchase. You're just depleting yourself. So the moral of the story is, is when you want to acquire things, try to create some type of game plan for it. All right, this costs, let's say, $150 or so. So this check, I'm going to put away $75, and then the next check, I'm going to put away $75, then I will acquire that item. And you do that for anything. Don't just make impulse purchases. Now, trust me, I, I know it sounds a little easier said than done, but it's definitely possible. And what I notice about a lot of, of men and young men is a lot of things hit, hit home more when it's coming from another man. Um, it's no secret. I mean, in the African American community, a lot of us grew up without fathers and things like that. So, even if our mothers and you know what have you have, have told us these things, you've heard it, you've been exposed to it. But sometimes it hits more home when it comes from a man. Um, I, I guess that's the not even I guess it's the truth. 
that's why I really was um, inspired to create this this channel because I felt like I had a lot to offer when it comes to you know fashion style spirituality just mindset of a gentleman it's things that I live by it's not a trend for me it's just who I am it's who I've been and I felt like if I can give a, a, a clear-cut message and present myself well you know to, to, to older men and young men that maybe they would take heed to more of the uh, things and and um, things that they should know as for being a gentleman, you know, they would take it in better than it coming from, I don't know, anyone else like this. So I, I just think that this avenue is always good. When you, when you hear these things from an, another man, especially a man who, who's been through a few things, you take heed to it a little bit more. And that's what we were missing in our, in our culture and in a lot of African American families. You just didn't have that male guidance to really tell you how they live life, what they learn from it, what to look out for. You know, it would kind of stop that process of having to learn a lot on your own and be in a hole and dig yourself out of it. All right? So finances, definitely important. Take it serious. Have a game plan for everything that you're trying to do. Save again with a bank that's far away from you. Have it automatically coming out of your account. That way, while you're making all your mistakes in your 20s, at least that $25, $50, or $30, whatever it is, is already coming out of your account every time you get paid and going to that bank. And when you're young and you're just living life, trust me, you're not going to see, you're not going to notice it, and you're not going to feel like taking two or three buses or a train just to go get that $25 out of the account. You know what I'm trying to say? You'll just live off of what you have. So get these principles going and you should be okay. Regrets that I've had in my 20s financially, I guess it would probably be that. It would probably be uh, not not being so disciplined to obtain the things I want. Since I was young, I always had um, a thing for fashion. You know, when I was in college, when I was in high school, I went to a, a private school. I went to St. John's Prep in high school. I went there for my freshman and sophomore year. And even in um, my first through fifth grade, I went to uh, Catholic school as well, so I'm not Catholic, I, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm more Baptist than Catholic, but I just believe in God, I'm not going to get into religions and things like that, but um, so I was always used to being in uniform, and I guess that kind of uh, sparked something in me to, to always want to be neat, and tidy, and, and having everything sharp, because I was always in, in uniform, and then I just spilled into streetwear, and I, anything that I wore, I just wanted it to be always you know, looking, looking fresh. That, that was, that was just my thing. I always had to have some type of swag. My mother always kept us dressed really, really nice when we were young. So, um, but yeah. So, to get back to what I was saying, I was always into fashion. So every time I was working when I, in my twenties, and I was always just spending up so much money. I came across so much money in my life from working, from certain little investments that I used to do back in the days, and I always came across a lot of money and I used to spend, 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 spend. And when I reflect on it, I'm like, wow, there's so much things I could have did. I could have saved up so much and, you know, make sure my credit score was good. But, you know, when you're young, you don't have a lot of intellect for all of that, you know. Those things come later on when you start to want to acquire things that matter. But the only thing that mattered to me was clothes back then. But um, I wish I would have just told myself, you know what, I'm going to get all these things. But again, I'm going to put away $25 here, $75 here, and then go grab that. Instead of using a credit card to get everything that I want, just so I could be like, wow, look at all this stuff that I got. And then you fall in love with that stuff for maybe two, three weeks, maybe a month, depending on your passion for whatever it is that you bought. And then it becomes like regular. It's like, okay, I got this now, so the desire to have it is not there anymore. I have it, so, you know. But by that, the money's gone now. That 400, 500, whatever you spend is gone. So just be strategic about you know what you're trying to purchase, and then it'll, it'll be alright. You still get the things that you want. It'll just be over time. You know what I mean? What advice would I give to somebody in their twenties uh, financially? Um, just be patient. Be patient. I know that you are. Um, just getting out of school, or maybe you didn't go to school, go to school, um, you're just out here in your early 20s and you're just trying to figure things out. 
and you want to be a man, you want to have this and you want to have that, just understand from a person who's already older that everything is, it takes time. So any avenue that you want to take to have financial stability, if it doesn't require you to put in some work and to be patient, then it's probably not for you. Anything that's promised to you quickly, all of those get rich quick scams and you know, people want to bring you to all these different meetings and, and, and to hear all this type of talk about this, that, and the third. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with, honest with you. Yeah, a lot of these things are avenues and, uh, and uh, streams to, for, for having more income. But just know that whatever you get yourself into, it takes time. Don't let nobody promise you a get-rich-quick scheme overnight. It's just not happening. It's too much to learn and being financially stable. You have to first know how to how to be down and how to deal with that. You know, how to juggle a little bit. Because if you can't manage a little bit of money, then if God bless you to have a lot of money, oh, forget about it. It's a wrap. <laughs> you, you're just going to be spending so much because you have no budget, no financial discipline. You don't know how to allocate certain monies to certain things as far as, like, which one is a more of a priority. So there's a lot of... Um, gems in the struggle. It really is. And you have to like um, cherish being down because that's where you're going to get all your skills up. That's where you're going to learn how to finagle a lot of things and how to make things work for you. So when you have all that money later on, it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's nothing. It's, you, know, you know what money feels like. You know how to juggle you know, hard times. You can keep that money and make it last for you. All right? Well, now that I'm in my 30s, what is my uh, relationship with money now? Uh, it's much better. It's much better than it was in my 20s. Um, it's having a child uh, a main part of it. It's definitely a big part of it. Um, you're no longer living for yourself. So, this is as a man, if you are a real man, that you take providing for your family very seriously. So the thought of not being able to provide for your son or your daughter because of your own selfish greed to have things that you, you want, it, it haunts you. So you're constantly thinking about, all right, let me put this money aside. Let me save this. Let me do that just in case anything is needed for him or her, I'll, I'll be able to do it. In case anything is needed for the house, you're always trying to put away monies aside because now you know how much things can happen in the house and with being a parent, how much things can go wrong and how much things cost to fix those things. So now you're constantly just trying to have a stash of money just saved up, stacking and stacking and stacking so that if anything happens, you can just pull from it and not use credit cards and not disrupt your, uh, your flow. You know what I mean? Because when you start using credit cards for everything, it can get crazy to the point where you can't even afford you know, the necessities that you, not, that you have to keep up with. So, um, and then as I got older, just trial and error, just learning that, you know what, a lot of the things that I was buying off of impulse, I began to, um, to give away or donate to other people who really, really need it because when you're buying things off of impulse, you're not really understanding what, what it is that you really need. You're just trying to fill a void, like, okay, I'm bored, so let me go purchase something to make me feel better about being bored, or I had a, I've been working really, really hard, let me reward myself and go buy something. Those things are good when it's done periodically, but if you are always trying to fill a void with spending money, you're going to always be broke. So it's always best to find out what you really need, because if you buy the things that you really need, those are the things that you're going to be using a lot. You ever notice when it comes to fashion, if you... You're always going for a certain um, selected items in your wardrobe. You have so much in there, but for some reason you seem to wear those four or ten items all the time. And everything else that sits there, it's because those are probably the things that you really, really needed. Those, those uh, blue chinos, those white button-up shirts, that blue blazer, those brown pants, those black shoes and brown shoes, that black belt versus all of those fabric belts that you bought with crazy buckles and all these things like that. It's those things that are simplistic that can be used every day 
those are the things that you want to stock up on and you get the best value you know for your money so um yeah that's that's my advice and i think yeah that's why my relationship got better with money now because i'm just getting older and i care about things that's more more important don't get me wrong i still shop i mean i have to that's my thing you know but um a little bit more strategic a little bit more strategic in how i, I how i do it if there's something that i want I, i'll plan to get it and i'll buy quality over quantity any day now <laughs> all right guys there you have it the gentleman's look we talked finance today uh there's so many so much more that we can get into but i just wanted to start this um this little series of financial talks to see uh, the feedback that I get from it, if people actually are taking to it, if they feel it's interesting enough that they learn some learn something. Um, again, a lot of you have to go through something to be able to talk about it. So, a lot of times when you hear me talking about anything, a lot of times it's things that I've been through, things that I've learned, and I'm just trying to share with you because these are just conversations that men don't have with each other. They don't really talk about finances. Especially in our um, culture, in African Americans, they they tend to hide a lot of uh, discussions about things that they may feel may open up a vulnerable side. But if you don't talk about what you're going through, then how are you going to get any help? You never know who's willing to stick their hand out and help you. Who's in a better situation? So you you need to talk about sometimes where you're at, especially if you're talking with someone who's mature and understanding. Just open up a little bit. Don't be so closed in. You need people. There's no such thing as being a person who is not a people person. If you hear somebody that say, I'm not a people person, then leave that person alone. Because if there was a terrorist attack and they was about to die and you was in a position to help them, I guarantee you they'll become a people person at that, at that moment in time. All right? You need people. You need people. We need to talk. We need to get together and talk things so that we can help each other out. You'd be surprised what you learn from your neighbor. It doesn't matter what type of walk of life that person is coming from there's always something to learn from everybody so don't don't cancel nobody out you don't know when you're going to need them don't cancel no one out all right unless they're trying to cause I mean, any harm to you to you or your family then that's a different story but give people the chance until they until they uh dig their own hole you understand what i'm saying so the gentlemen's look i hope you guys enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel um hit the notification tab once again uh, just to be notified of all the videos that I post. I promise to try to stay consistent and keep going for you guys. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sending you guys off in style. Bye-bye.